This is historically backward, but it's intellectually correct. A lot of the problems with counting and sets are determined by database inquiries. Now, when people first started to work on this set theoretic notation, there was no idea of a database. That's why it's historically backwards. But there are questions that people like to ask, and now with computerized searching, with databases, you can start to address these questions. So you could ask, like, how many CS majors took a physics course numbered above 4,000? So that describes two sets, the CS majors, I'm kind of making a Venn diagram here, and the people who took physics courses numbered above 4,000, and you're looking for the intersection of that set. So they're going to be different ways of looking at that those numbers and those can be very important. How many CS majors took the second semester of aviation mechanics? None. So this is another kind of situation that happens. How many people in Pocatello own a Subaru and a Ford? You go through the motor vehicle database and you have the set of Subaru owners and you have the set of four owners and you're looking for the intersection. So the simplest situation for doing this is with a partition. And partition in the formal sense sounds a little bit mysterious. If you draw pictures it is much less mysterious. So let's do both. So the idea of a partition is you have some set uh, A and I'm going to use a script A just because it's a big set. And you write A as a union of subsets. So I'm going to write that out kind of in a roster way. Let's say there are N of them. So you could write it out this way. Um, or you could use the, the modified summation mota motation, excuse me, notation to say that this is the union i equals 1 to n of the various a sub i's. Pretty abstract. And in a partition, uh, a sub i intersect a sub j is empty unless i is equal to j. So if you intersect a set with itself, you get itself. And if you intersect a set with any of these other sets in the partition, they don't meet at all. So that's what makes it a partition. And so there are two pieces to it. That sounds a little bit mysterious, but what we're really talking about is uh, something like this. I'm going to draw this diagram and then we're going to leave it again later. I'm going to take three sets and I'm going to, because I know what's coming later, I'm going to label them as T, B, and E. And I've got this Venn diagram that conceptually represents them. You can't really prove anything with a Venn diagram, but there it is. And so it looks like there's a, a the, the grand union of all of these, and now you've got all these various intersections. You've got red intersect green, or T intersect E, and then you get the three-way intersection here in the middle, the, the little Wankel engine, and uh, look that up. And, uh, um, and there are various things. And this is kind of like one of those tricks, those optical illusion tricks. You know, you're looking at the duck or the rabbit. So if you look at this one way, you've got a set that is divided into three things that happen to intersect. Or you can look at this another way and say, oh, there's a partition here. And the partition is, um, it's a little bit complicated to draw, but I'm going to, to do it as best I can. If you look at each one region, something that has nothing smaller, then what you get is um, an indication of some of the partition. So just to get you started, I've colored in three of these regions and say this is the, there's nothing smaller in this picture than this region. That's one set in the partition. Here's another set in the partition. Here's another set in the partition. Out over here, this kind of 
mustachey thing is another set in the partition. So that's all we're saying is that we've taken something and we've chopped it up with no overlaps. So the fancy word for that is partition. And the uh, there's a symbol that gets used sometime, which is uh, can be helpful here. So let me write this symbol down. It's a it's a union, but it's kind of squared off. I don't know if there's any philosophical meaning to that. So this symbol means disjoint union. It means that it's the union of a sub i and a sub j, and they don't meet. There's nothing in between. So that's the disjoint union. That's a pretty standard notation. So the, the idea here is, well, let me just kind of write down um, the, the basic formula. This is called the addition formula. And it says if you have a partition, it's pretty easy to count how many things are in the grand union of all these sets, which is you take the number in this set and the number in this set and the number in this set. Because there's no overlaps, there's nothing counted twice. So the addition formula looks like this, um, using the notation I had above. If I have this scripty A thing, the number of elements in that is the sum, I equals one to, what did I use up there, N, of the size of the individual sets a sub i. So there's the addition formula as presented in every textbook on discrete mathematics. And because it's a partitioned set, there are no overlaps, nothing gets counted twice, so you just go ahead and count along. So if I um, go back to my three-way Venn diagram, I could start to write in numbers and um, and I'll write in 8675309 and say, well, if there are eight in here and there are six in here and there are seven in here, these have formed a partition into seven sets. That makes sense, uh, as we'll find out in, in the next lecture, why, why we know it's seven. But also we can just count. And so the number of things in here is 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 0 plus 9. It is possible that one of the sets in the partition is empty. That doesn't intersect anything. No big problem. Okay. So there is a problem if there is an overlap. So let's restrict ourselves to two sets and worry about their overlap. So I'm going to have two sets. Uh, let's call them G and P. So I've done G and green and P in uh, pink. And we could have a certain number of elements in each of these things. There's a partition there, um, or there's not a partition. You can think, well, I've got G and I've got P. That's not a partition. But if you think I've got G minus the intersection and the intersection, and then P minus the intersection, that's set theoretic minus, then that's a partition. So we're just kind of cutting things up finer and finer. So let's just make up some numbers to put in here um, 11, 4, and 6. So how many elements are there total? Well, we can see that P has 6 plus 4, and I'm sorry, that's G. We can see that P has, I'm sorry, that's 11 plus 4. I'm reading it backwards. Uh, P has 4 plus 6, so G has 15 and P has 10. The problem is when we did that, these four elements got counted as part of G, and they also got counted as part of P. When we looked at how many things were in G, we included those four. And we looked at how many things were in P, we included those four. They got counted twice. And so this is what's known as the inclusion-exclusion principle. The total number of elements involved, it's pretty easy to see, is 21. But if we look at the size of P, that is evidently 10, and the size of G is evidently 15, Kind of, it's going in and out. Is this a partition? Is this not a partition? If you separate out the intersection, it becomes a partition. Anyway, 
we've got the size of p is 10, the size of g is 15. That's 25 elements, but when looking at this picture, there are only 21. What's the difference? The difference is the size of the intersection, and the size of the intersection is 4, and this gives us the inclusion-exclusion principle for two sets. Uh, the size of G union P is the size of G plus the size of P minus the size of the intersection. So that's the inclusion exclusion principle. And this is something that gets used over and over in counting again. Now we have to back up to, oh, let's make it to this picture because people who write discrete math books do silly things with this. So there's a thing in our textbook about the number of people who took compiler design and database management and the number of people who took assembly language and compiler design. And this is a backwards expression. This is not a problem that people have. Uh, the, 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 the question involved there is like how many CS majors were there based on how many overlaps there were on all these courses. Well, you know what? Every CS department in the universe, except maybe on Saturn, knows how many CS majors there were. Every math department knows how many math majors there were. Every English department knows how many English majors there were. So this is a backwards question, but people ask it anyway. And so you got to answer it whether it would actually occur in real life or not. So let's go back to this picture of a triple. And the idea here is that I have divided it up into a partition and uh, and that's by looking down at intersecting, intersecting, intersecting. Now the way we do that systematically is we look at the single sets then we look at the intersections. I feel like I'm playing three card money. Where's the card? So we look at the intersections of two and then the intersections of three. I'm not, I can't do that with my fingers. Intersections with three. And then uh, we might want to look at intersections with four. This is getting quite exotic. I can't remember ever in my life having to do something with intersections of four. I probably did, but it's not something that's very common. So the most common one is intersections of three like this. And, um, and the, the, the trick, which is described in every textbook, but I want to make a little bit more stark, is you look at the empty set, that's the union of none of them. You look at the uh, one-fold intersections, that's just the individual sets. Then you look at the twofold intersections. So that's, uh, I'm writing them down. I'm trying to be a little systematic about it. And then finally, you look at the threefold intersection. There's only one of those. Uh, we're going to talk about how to look at that. There should be. Um, eight here, and there are. It's a power of two. It's like it's it's not really a power set, but you'll see why it's a power of two in the next uh, class. Anyway, and then you look at those things. Well, the empty set doesn't contribute anything. Uh, we've got the. Oh, by the way, what we're talking about here is tacos, burritos, and enchiladas. Okay, so there's how many people ordered nothing. How many people order a taco? How many order a burrito? How many order an enchilada? If you're running a restaurant, you know how many people ordered tacos. You don't have to go through any fancy math to do this. Uh, and then how many order a, 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 a combination platter, a taco and burrito, or burrito and taco? It doesn't matter. Uh, taco and enchilada, burrito and enchilada. And how many big eaters ordered all three? That's the intersection of the set of taco eaters plus the set of intersect, excuse me, the burrito eaters intersect the enchilada eaters. This 
is not a partition, but it can be drawn as a partition. So if you draw it as a partition, filling in the little pieces as you know them, you'll be able to work out based on the partial information that you're given. Usually the information you're given is like the double intersections and the triple intersection, but people could be creative. This isn't a real problem, so people can be as creative as they want, but the way to solve it is to think about partitions, and if you think about partitions, is it a rabbit or is it a duck? Well, if you think about them as you can see this as partitioned or you can see this as the intersection of, of three sets, both ways are useful. You got to kind of go back and forth.